Hey guys, NJ here, and today we're looking at something different, certainly for my channel anyway, and that is at this Ender 3 3D printer by Creality based out of China. Now, what's interesting about this printer is it's a very good budget printer, actually under $200. Now, back when I started looking at 3D printers, this was probably five years ago, they were just hideously expensive and way outside uh, the kind of budget that I would be able to justify for use in the hobby sector that I'm in, certainly, which is quadcopters, but I'm forever needing 3D printed parts like these TPU camera mounts, these shock absorbers on the front, these LED holders at the back, antenna holders, you name it, I'm always needing 3D printed parts. But as I said, I couldn't justify really the cost just for uh, facilitating the hobby. Now these things are under 200 bucks, it's really uh, quite a different game. And it was only a friend of mine when I saw his uh, Ender 3 and he showed me it working, I absolutely had to get one. And at this price point, it then became something that was sensible and I think would work well with uh, all the things I do to do with quadcopters, but obviously this reaches far beyond quadcopters. You can print parts for your uh, vacuum cleaner, parts for your car, there's there's kind of all kinds of uses for these things. So I was very easily able to, to justify getting one at that price. But does cheap mean that it's bad? Um, well, this printer has been out for a little while now. But upon researching the budget ends of printers, this name kept coming up again and again. And with good reason, it is a fantastic little printer for the money that you pay. Now, let's talk a little bit about my particular ender here, because if you look at the, I'll put links in the description to this guy so you can check it out for yourself. If you look at that, it won't look an awful lot like the one that you see here. And that's because I've made a lot of upgrades on this printer. But they aren't necessary you don't have to do these upgrades they just facilitate other things like more exotic filaments by upgrading the part cooling fan etc etc and there are little things you can add on here just to make the printer a little nicer to operate things like this bed handle here when the bed's heated at say 80 degrees for printing a certain type of filament I don't actually want to grab grab the actual handle myself or go into the menu and start moving it around manually. I can actually just use this, this bed handle. So printing things like that, as I said, the park cooling fan, I've got a little light bar holder here. And this was something that I did um, was to add two LED light bars and they were light bars off of one of the quads. That I, well, I had spare light bars kicking around because I'm always fitting those to my quadcopters anyway. So that was actually quite an easy thing to wire in and gave me a nice, uh, nice light source on top of my print. There's a whole bunch of things. We'll talk about those a little bit later. But the good news is you've already bought your filament ready to run in this thing. That's all you need to actually go ahead and start printing these parts. So you're, you, you end up with a printer uh, a device where it can make parts to make itself better. That's not scary, is it? So let's talk about the build itself and how it went together. I am a complete 3D printer newbie, so all of this was, was new to me in terms of mechanics and how this thing all slotted together. The actual instruction manual that you get with this, that the actual unit comes flat packed um, and it's partly assembled. Now, the hard parts are done for you essentially so all the wire looming the hot end everything's put together uh, from that point of view all you're really doing is assembling the frame if you're a seasoned veteran this would probably take you about 20 minutes to half an hour to put together if you're a new guy like me and you want to take your time and you want to make sure this thing is built perfectly then it's going to take you probably an hour I ended up taking about two um, but again because of the things that I researched, one thing that you'll hear time and time again is take your time with the mechanical build. If the mechanics are sloppy, if they're not, if there's play in the mechanics, if, if uh, everything isn't true and at 90 degrees, it doesn't matter how good the G-code and the wizardry of the software, that doing its job won't be enough because if there's play in, if there's play in the actual mechanics, that's going to come out in your print. You're going to end up with a bad print and you're going to have to disassemble parts to get to other parts to take the play out and you believe me you're far better just getting this right from the start so my first bit of advice when you're building this is take your time get a metal ruler with you know fine millimeter increments on it and measure the distances and make sure they're equal all the way down from side to side up and down just make sure everything is perfect what i did was to assemble this and 
to just hand tight, very lightly hand tighten all the screws so that when it was all assembled on a nice glass bed so we know everything's level don't assemble it on the carpet you know make sure you put it on something that's dead level when you put it together keep everything hand tight and just just about so that you can make sure everything is true and then go around slowly tightening things up to get them nice and straight now one thing that's not covered in the manual in the manual that may be in later iterations but when i got this about six weeks ago wasn't is the um, the wheels and how they work in the runners in terms of their ability to clamp and actually tension against the frame. This is quite an important step that I think needs to go in the manual. And I'll put, bring up a graphic here, just a picture to show you what I'm talking about. But if we were to take these three wheels here that are operating, they're, they're basically taking the X axis and moving it in the Z orientation. So the up and down, we've got these three wheels. Now one of the wheels on the uh, the left, the one on the left side here, if you look at this picture you can see one of the bolts actually is hex shaped and that's so that you can adjust it with a spanner. I'll quickly point out all the tools you need to assemble this are in the kit and in terms of the bolts and bits that you get you'll actually end up with lots of spares. They've done that on purpose which again is a great thing. So you've got everything you need to put this together in the box and you've got plenty of spares there. But back to the point I was making, that hex needs adjusting. Now it's actually where it threads in, It's the main body of it's actually off center. And the point is, is that when you adjust it with a spanner, it will move the wheel in the runner closer into the frame, essentially getting the three wheels on this section to add more tension to grip the frame that they're running in, or you can move the bolt uh, counterclockwise and it will move the bolt away from uh, move the wheel outwards and that will give you a looser uh, a looser tension with more play so you've got to find that sweet spot because if you've got it so that there's too much tension and it's very stiff in the runners your motor's going to have to work very hard the motor that drives the belts that move this thing around the uh, if the tension's too high the motors are going to get very hot because they're going to have to work very hard um, and they might misstep, which is obviously a really bad thing. So you don't want to do it. You don't want it too tight. But then if it's too loose, you'll have play. And play's even, you know, that's a really bad thing too. Because these printers are moving very, uh, very fast and changing direction very quickly. And that jerking change of direction will come out and, and actually cause play in the frame. And if there's play in the frame, you're going to get an awful print from it. So as you assemble all these parts, test the wheels in the runners. Make sure that they feel like you can move them easily with just your fingers. They shouldn't feel so stiff that you really have to grab them and move them about. Um, for instance, the Y-axis has got the bed on it. I can move this very easily with one finger. That's super important. That needs to feel loose so that it's nice and nice and easy to move. But when I try and jiggle the, the bed in any direction uh, on that axis, there's no play. If there's a little bit of play, tighten that bolt with the, uh, the hex on it, that wheel, and it will just clamp in a little bit closer and, and grip it nice and true. So that's my biggest bit of advice that isn't covered in the manual. Make sure you do that. Do that with each section which has wheels on it. Make sure it's nice and free, uh, but with no play, and then you'll have a nice mechanical build. Other than that, the rest of it is pretty straightforward, to be honest with you. All the plugs to plug in all the different motors are well labeled really no complaints so as i said if you're a seasoned vet probably a half hour build if you've just done this for the first time put the kettle on get a cup of coffee in your hand go through the manual a couple of times measure everything up twice and then when you assemble it you'll have uh you know a nice easy time and your prints will thank you for it you'll end up with something that's so much better off the print bed so i've got lots of little video clips to show you of this thing printing uh some of those prints will be showing you at different stages as different upgrades were applied as I said, it does print fantastically without having to do a, sim a single modification on it. It will print really well. But the reason for some of the upgrades for me were being able to print some of the, mu the more exotic filaments. When you first get this, the filament that I suggest that you start working with is PLA because it's super easy to work with. It tends to print really nicely and it sticks really well to the included bed. Now this is the bed that comes with the Ender 3. It's a flexible bed and that means after you finish printing you can just undo the clips, pull it off and flex it to get your print off. But it has a kind of tactile surface that PLA sticks to really well and that's regardless of whether you heat the bed up or not you can actually print PLA straight onto this without heating the bed and it sticks uh, sticks 
exceptionally well. Um, what I did was to buy a glass bed. It's just a simple flat piece of glass. Um, and that's better for printing things like PETG, which is a slightly more weatherproof, higher temperature um, filament. That's uh, It's a real wonder filament. I love using that stuff. Um, but you can't print it onto a bed like this because I did that and it actually bonded to the bed, which is uh, not a good thing. So this is really for PLA and low temperature adhesion stuff. I wouldn't use this for PETG or even TPU, to be honest with you. I would use a glass bed for that. So that's why I got a glass bed uh, for this one. Uh, the bed itself will heat up. I can't remember what the top temperature is, but it gets pretty hot if you need it to. For PETG, if you're not using an adhesion spray on the glass bed or a, a glue stick or something, you can heat it up to about 80 degrees and it will stick well at that temperature. Um, but one of the other things that's useful is to upgrade the um, parts cooler. Now, the parts cooler that comes with the Ender 3 is quite um, a low RPM blower and... I'll show you a picture of that part itself. It kind of spreads the air out in quite a, a low pressure way. This is called the Pets Fang 2. It's available on Thingiverse. All of these parts I've printed are available on Thingiverse to download the STL files. There's a fantastic community in the 3D world, much like the quadcopter community, in terms of uh, resource for uh, guides on how to do all of this stuff, um, advice on printing, there's lots of online videos, there's stuff that there's kind of no point in me covering because it's so well documented already, certainly in terms of the slicing software you need to uh, create the g-code file that your printer will work with, that stuff's all, um, it's all out there and very much available, but ask in the comments if there's something specifically you want to know and I'll point you off to it, check the description, I'm going to put a lot of information in there as well, but yeah, the Petsfang 2 cooler, uh, what I've decided to do is to print the one which uses a 5051 24 volt fan, uh, which I bought off Amazon, super cheap, Stuck that on there, that's a much more high pressure fan. And then the actual fan parts themselves uh, project the air in a much more high pressure way right onto the uh, hot end nozzle. So you get really good part cooling and that allows you to print with uh, a lot of different types of filament, especially things like I found uh, TPU for me works well with, with better cooling. Um, different types of TPU will print differently. Some print with very little part cooling needed. It's all it, it, for me, it's about being able to have the option to run with uh, very light part cooling or really aggressive part cooling. So that's why I did that. But I printed that with the stock hot end surround and, and fan and it printed beautifully. So I'll put a link in the description to those bits. Very easy to print, uh, print and fit. And again, you don't have to use this upgraded fan. You could use the stock fan. I just went with this because it's a slightly uh, more high pressure fan. Um, we've talked about the bed handle. One thing over on the left here, um, which I had a lot of people ask me about that have seen the photos that I've been posting on Instagram about this, was I fitted a Raspberry Pi. Now, um, as stock, you have um, an SD card slot on this and you have to put your SDL file onto the SD card. You walk it over to your printer, you pop it in and then you use the interface here um, to load it up and to set it printing and to make any adjustments uh, to the flow of the filament etc etc while it's printing you do all that from the SD uh, SD card now getting a Raspberry Pi and they're pretty cheap to do there's a, a printable file to make this surround that will slot straight on the side for the Raspberry Pi and I'm running a program called Octoprint um, on the Raspberry Pi and that allows me to connect uh, using a web interface to my local area network. You can also go as far as connecting remotely if you want to, so you can keep an eye on prints while you're out if you want to do those kind of things. Um, but it allows me to control and upload the STL files locally, control the axis of the printer. There's all kinds of things you can do. It really expands the functionality of your printer. Again, works wonderfully. It's well documented. Again, there's loads of videos on setting that up specifically for that printer out in the wild. Again, I can link those for you if you're interested in doing that kind of thing. Another thing that, as, as well as doing all of that, that the Octopi can do, there's a plugin for it called Octolapse, and this allows me to plug in a webcam. This is a very cheap Logitech C120 or 270, that's the one it is, C270. Um, I have that focus nice and short, and this allows me to take time lapses of the build, if that's something that you fancy doing. Um, and it works in a very clever way. What it's doing is taking a picture at every height layer change. So every time it prints a layer, it will tell the heated uh, hot ends to get out of the way over there. It will take a picture, 
the hot end will come back, print another layer, it will get out of the way, take another picture, and you end up with some pretty awesome, awesome animations, and I've got a few of those to show you. For instance, I've done one of this Buddha, which is something that I printed, um, which came out really well. Uh, let me show you a quick time lapse of that. So in terms of the quality of what comes off this printer, I've got plenty of videos here to show you of what this was printing like when I just started out with it and how it's printing now. One of the early projects that I did, which was pretty ambitious to be honest with you, I should have gone for something simpler, was printing the parts on this model jet engine and I'll put a link for the STL file for this. This was several sections that I had to print. I had to print all of the um, compressor fan parts and then I printed the shroud. I printed the shroud and the white parts in PLA and then PETG, this translucent PETG for the turbo fan uh, itself and the compressor parts. And you can see this came up absolutely magnificently, really great print quality. And pretty much all of this was done at a 0.2 layer height. It wasn't done, you can print at a 0.1 layer height which will require um, much more time to print. You can also change the size of the nozzle to get finer prints if you want to do that. All of these things can be changed but as you can see there I'll put some nice detailed pictures up for you to look at. The quality came out absolutely fantastic. You can also print in vase mode which is one continuous print, spiral print as it slowly changes height going around. It's a single layer thin but you end up with these incredible looking uh, vase designs. Um, they have to be a solid object that can print in one single go but I mean just look at the quality of of that. I'm not sure if I can get that to focus for you but it is just absolutely beautiful and that has all come of come off of this amazing sub $200 printer. So this printer really can grow with you and if you're slightly apprehensive about getting into 3D printing and, and you were like me uh, six weeks ago where I went into this completely blind, just doing a little bit of research and not really knowing how any of this works, including the software. I can highly recommend it, guys. It's just, it's been an absolute joy to use. As I said, there's a really great and strong community in the 3D printer world that will be able to help you along the way. And if you've got any questions about this particular setup or if there's more you want to know about this particular printer, I will do my best to answer it in the comments. I'm always very active in the comments, so please feel free to ask away. And uh, I hope this leaves you confidently uh, thinking about perhaps making that jump into the 3D printed world because for the money, this is absolutely spectacular. And as well as all the hobby stuff that I use it for, with, well, I'll be using it for with the drones, there's all the other uh, various other things that you can make. I'll, again, I'll put plenty of uh, 3D printing glory up there for you to look at to see what's come off of this. Um, so I hope you enjoyed that, guys. There's a little look at the Ender 3 by Creality. Links in the description, as always. You've got any questions, drop them in the comments. And uh, yeah, it's great to see you guys. Good to be back. Look forward to speaking to you in the comment section. And I'll see you all in the next one.